Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to do a flight test of the Taurus space plane and then try to fit it with various launch vehicles. I've already tested it during a stream with SLS with wings folded and that worked out. We went to the moon. We didn't get the drag I wanted coming back so I've tried to rebalance it and also our center of mass was too far forward for that. So I've tried to rebalance it a little bit so that it'll have better characteristics coming back from the moon, which it needs to do. One reason it has a somewhat larger wing than the Shuttle Mark II, for instance, is that we wanted more drag out of it, and so that it could slow down a little bit easier on return. I don't want to have to do multiple passes where the crew is going to be stuck in the radiation belt for a long period of time. And it might be that we need an even heftier wing than this. So th this is a pretty hefty wing when you think about it. And also the fact that it's a single deck uh, layout does help with the mass to the area at the bottom. So basically, whenever you're coming back in the atmosphere, everything has to do with how much mass you're putting on top of the area at the bottom. And so because we're only a single deck compared to the shuttle, uh, two deck layout, right? Uh, shuttle again. It has two decks, uh, and in this case, we have everything in line. But with the shuttle's two decks, it's putting a lot of mass on the surface area down here. Of course, it has the huge wings too, which helps. But because we're a single deck layout, we're putting less mass on the body area, and that will help out. But we need to make sure it works, and so. In the test that I did during the live stream, it didn't seem to work that well, but we'll see again And now that I've rebalanced it. And I fixed the textures a little bit. Uh, it's now looking a little bit smoother. But right now I've fitted it with uh, F404 triple fans. These are from the FA18. I could have gone with much more powerful jets, but then it's going to be pretty heavy in the back. Already it's heavier than the AJ10190s that we had before. Uh, the jets combined are 1.75 tons heavier, and so I have had to put lead ballast in the front, 1.75 tons worth of lead ballast, so to balance it out. Basically, the center of mass of the cockpit is about equidistant to the center of mass of the whole thing as jets are, so we can just do it equally. And yeah, let's take it out to the runway. I've put the air intakes on and we'll see if this works out at all. Okay, here we are on the shuttle runway. Now we are not fully fueled, so it's not as heavy as putting 1.75 tons of lead and having the jet engines in the back might make it seem, uh, but it's about fueled to where it would be during a re-entry kind of situation. That is the maximum load that we expect it having coming back through the atmosphere. Let me try and rotate. It's possible that the landing gear is too far forward, in which case we won't be able to rotate. Yeah, I think the landing gear is too far forward, which is fine for landings, but... Oh, it hopped. <laughs> okay, we'll have to adjust the landing gear. Oh, uh, will we have enough runway? Shutter runway allows for a fairly long V1. Very high V1. Okay. Good. <laughs> a good abort. So, I mean, it's pretty close already. The problem is when we fully load it with fuel, the center mass goes back like that. So we do have to be somewhat careful about where we put these things. Otherwise, it's got to flop on its tail like uh, we've seen before. Okay, I think I'm going to fit less powerful jets on. Because we accelerated pretty quickly. But we don't really have a good selection right now because I didn't install the advanced jet engines extended. We'll try these, which is from a CRJ, 41 kilonewtons. It's a little bit lighter, so then we can lighten up the, the ballast in front. 
that's probably minimal for takeoff and we're trying to make it a little bit lighter instead of having it be so powerful let's see if this works but yeah I don't know let me take a look at far 14 degree angle of attack for lift at 117 meters per second not exactly what you would like to see again it doesn't really have to take off from a runway that's not that's not actually one of its requirements but I was hoping to test whether it could fly so we could always launch it on a rocket and then see how it flies coming back our acceleration will be less than it was with the F-18 jet engines whoa whoa it hopped I was oh oh gosh I was hoping that we wouldn't have hops on this runway I thought that was one of the good things about this runway well at least the crew would have survived, but boy, we lost everything else. <laughs> okay, forget it, forget it, forget it. We'll do the flight testing later. Let's uh, let's go try and launch launch it. I I think maybe I should just skip trying to get it off a runway. I have a sneaking suspicion that I can probably move the center of mass back. Oh, now right now we've got a full load of fuel, so it's not going to be good. Uh, this is just the space plane version, not the air test version. So, basically, if we have half fuel, then it's okay. What might happen is I might move it back and say that we can't re-enter with as much of a load of fuel as we were intending. So, and I'll move the center of mass back a little bit. Just a little bit, like a fraction of a meter. And maybe that'll help it a little bit as far as its balance is concerned. But we are going to try and fit on a launcher now. And our first test will be to see if with wings extended it can launch on the SLS. And that way we can have outboard controls. On uh, my previous flight test on SLS we didn't have the ailerons as such. We only had the ones in here and we did not have the ones that would awkwardly be sticking out here when the wings were folded. You'll notice nodes on the side there. That's for if we wanted to have the abort system that goes with the Shuttle Mark II, which is uh, there'll be a decoupler here and then uh, SRBs on the side, so the decoupler would separate off the cabin and the SRBs would pull it off and then on the SRB package there would also be parachutes and then those SRBs and parachutes could be jettisoned if uh, well if we get high enough into our orbit I don't we're not gonna try and use the fairing you can see how big it is okay so that's basically how it sits on SLS and the aerodynamics are interesting oops wrong way around and there's one reason, somebody had asked why it has a twin tail. The reason is so that we don't have one really big tail. Uh, if we have one really big tail, it really sticks out. Of course, the wings are sort of like that already, but uh, to avoid having, and make it possible with the wings folded to fit inside a fairing. Uh, but yeah, if it has one big vertical stabilizer, it won't fit in even a 10 meter fairing when the wings are folded. So that's why we have to have two tails. It also is good for looks, but that's separate. Okay, that's the orientation we want. So just make sure it gets to orbit with enough fuel to transfer to the moon, and maybe we'll do a re-entry test. Uh, we might be a little bit low in the flame trench here, but let's just go with it. All right, uh, throttle up, SAS on, ignition. launch we're not lined up with the moon or anything I'm not gonna send it to the moon as long as we have the Delta V in orbit it's fine 
we would probably need a much more customized adapter for this. Streamlined and everything. Could it fit in Starship's Bay? Possibly. I mean, that's 9 meters in diameter. I don't know about the vertical stabilizers though, but probably. I don't think that would be too much of an issue, though personally I would just strap it to the side of Starship, but <laughs> I don't know if the tanks can handle that, but in Kerbal they can. I've strapped uh, other space planes to the side of Starship before, including the shuttle. We of course could have used my shuttle mice to try to retrieve the RS-25s or something like that. I'm sure we have enough margin, I th I'm pretty sure about that. I don't think SLS will have any problem with this. Block 1, I don't know about. Uh, I don't know about it fitting the shuttle mice. On a lunar flyby mission, we could just underfuel that. Okay, we're late on the booster set. Taking a look at our Delta Vs, uh, the core could get us into orbit. The Block 1B doesn't have to do a whole lot of work there. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's something people don't understand with the high energy orbits that this is sending. The low thrust of the Block 1B doesn't really have much of an effect at all. Because we're basically... We could get into orbit pot potentially with the core. It's just that we ditched the core a little bit ahead of time and ignite the Block 1B in order to finalize orbit so that the core re-enters. That's what makes the shuttle mics work, by the way, because the shuttle mics have to get pretty close to orbit in order to return safely. Still quite a lot of effort to bring this little guy over to the moon. Okay, I'll just shut it down right before orbit here. Okay, uh, so that allows it to deorbit and separation and ignition. Oh, I probably locked the fuels. Oh, we were slightly underfueled for this. So that actually helps a little bit. <laughs> I recommend that if you're having some qualms about this whole deal. You can underfuel the Block 1B just a little bit. It works out very nicely. See, so we get right to orbit. And the shuttle mice would be pretty close to orbit and be able to come right back down. It, they wouldn't even need to deorbit because they'd already have a suborbital periapsis, though they might want to control that a little bit and come down at a decent location. But yeah, so we are in orbit. We've got plenty of Delta V to transfer over to the moon. And this actually has a two of the shuttle's fuel cells. The shuttle had three. It says two in there to supply it with power. And I tested out how much consumption there was. It should have enough for 14 days now. And we'll just separate and see that everything else works nicely. Everything looking good. We don't have any Kerbals inside right now though. And so in space, this is how it looks inside. We have the seats in front would be able to go through all that and we can deliver pizzas <laughs> this will be a thing okay so it's good oh i'm so tempted let's let's see if we can deorbit it and see what happens it's probably gonna be nose heavy uh we need to waste some fuel though we could probably change our inclination so we would hit the ksc again I want to go radial so that we don't boost up our periapsis too much. Okay, maybe that's good enough. I have to put radiators on here. Of course the shuttle bay had the radiators inside. We need uh, flip open radiators on the side of it basically. I was thinking they would just drop down from the side of the bit uh, of the of the shuttle, or maybe they could extend from the top, I don't know. We, I mean, we don't have doors or anything, so... The sides might be trickier because the fuel tanks are there, but that might actually be better. I haven't decided yet. Another option is actually strap on stages for the transfer. 
we could have external fuel tanks and engines that could potentially sort of like glide back if they're designed right. Very radial burn here. Okay, so what does that make things look like? Oh, that's good. So our apoapsis is basically over Australia, periapsis over here. Uh, maybe a little bit past Australia, but that's basically what I wanted. The normal deorbit burn point that I use for the shuttle is basically around here-ish, right where our apoapsis is. So that will be good. And normally the periapsis is like zero or below for the shuttle. I'll set it to... We, we're gonna get more drag, hopefully. So I'm gonna set it to 20 kilometers here. And probably we're not gonna get through it though. The balance will probably be wrong, so... That's what shuttle re-entry testing is all about. Okay, here we go. We are oriented. Okay, at this point we'll check our control authorities. I think we can fizz warp through this bit. It's got a bit of a roll wobble there. It's got a lot of roll wobble now. Well, maybe I shouldn't do fizz warp. Let me see what our attitude adjustment... Yeah, let's just tighten that up a little bit. Our pitch authority is being used quite a lot. It is nose heavy. It's trying to lift the nose up. Which means I need to move the center of mass back. We can... Well, there isn't a whole lot to move back from the nose. Um, we can dump the food, water, and oxygen, I suppose, just to see. I can't stand the sound, so we won't do the rest of the oxygen. But it will be pretty sensitive. It'll only be a little bit difference. But we'll see how it manages. You can see the pitches max out. The roll has sort of balanced itself out now. Because we're not pitched up, we're not getting as much drag. And then when we get into the thicker part of the atmosphere, we're going to get more heating if we're still going very fast. We did have the wings explode during the test during the live stream, so... It is possible for it to uh, overheat. That's definitely possible. And we're getting some lift here. This is normal. The shuttle does this too. Hangs out around 70 to 75 kilometers a bit. In terms of our trajectory, we're, we're headed for the Gulf of Mexico, a little bit south of KSC there. Well, there's Baja, California. Well, it's kept about 22 degrees pitch so far. Ah, we do have some overheating on the engine, out of all things. One of the AJ-10s is overheating. That's perhaps not reasonable. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a body flap, but I thought the body itself would be shielding the AJ-10s in this situation. There are colliders in appropriate locations. This would be a good time to get some lift. If we can start going up, it'll probably cool off a bit. That needs to happen sooner rather than later. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, we lost one. Uh, it's using about half our roll authority to compensate for that. The engines aren't that heavy. I mean, it's not like losing a SSME or anything. They're 0.125 tons. It is sort of a perverse situation that as we use the propellant in order to try and keep our nose up, the center mass keeps moving forward because of the weight of the cockpit versus everything else. There's just not much mass in the back. 
as opposed to the shuttle where the SSMEs somewhat counterbalance the cockpit. So the more we try to keep our nose up, the worse the situation gets. We lost the other AJ-10-190. And, of course, that does move the central mass even further forward, which was already our problem. Since the body doesn't actually have a farm module on it, I might want to check whether it's got too much drag on it. Again, far as this quirk where it only reads lift from one side of the x-axis, and so everything has to be put on the left-hand side. And that does, that's not really conducive to creating body lift configurations, and so I don't know what to do about that in particular. I might see what happens if I use the stock module lifting surface to give the body lift. Well, uh, I think we managed to glide all the way to Florida here. So maybe it doesn't get as much drag as I was thinking. Well, now we're going to overshoot. It seems to be able to glide quite a long ways in this particular flight regime. Well, especially given our lack of pitch, I think I should probably tell it it doesn't have to hold that pitch anymore. Just so it has enough roll and yaw authority. And again, it's still wiggling around. We don't want to pitch down just yet. Not until we get to Mach 3. Well, so far it survived the tough part as such. Well, there is the pitch down maneuver that we have to worry about too. That's actually down to the vertical stabilizers. If we don't have enough vertical stabilizer, uh, we won't be able to hold yaw at a certain point. Okay, we're stalling a little bit and our pitch is being used too much, so we do have to try and pitch down. But if we pitch down while going too fast, the vertical stabilizers will not be enough. At this point, I think I'm going to turn off the RCS. Oh, okay, no, it wiggles too much. Smart ASS likes using the RCS for that sort of thing. All right, all right, all right. I don't think Smart ASS likes the control surfaces. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Maybe atmospheric autopilot would be better? Well, I guess I'm on manual now. I mean, with atmospheric autopilot doing fly-by-wire. So as long as we move the center of mass back so that I can hold its pitch during re-entry, we'll be in a better position. Now we need to pitch down more, otherwise we'll lose speed too quickly and stall. And normally the shuttle went down 20 degrees. We'll, we're still using a lot of pitch authority, which hopefully we will not need to use if we have a more properly located center of mass. Okay, that's a little bit too low here. Uh-oh. Having a little bit of trouble pulling up. Yeah, the nose heaviness. We sort of saw that on the runway as well. Yep, it's going to plow right into the water, I think. I'm getting some... Ah, uh, no, I lost it. I'm pulling up as hard as I can. Every so often, Atmospheric Off Pilot drops the pitch a little bit. I, I can't level out in time. Uh, what's going to happen, though? Oh, total destruction. Okay, well, anyway, that's how it launches with SLS. At least it can get to orbit and have enough to get to the moon and everything. But we're going to have to work on a re-entry, obviously. And we know what we need to do there. But, I mean, it's promising. It didn't destroy itself before hitting the water needs to have a little bit of rebalance. So I'll work on that 
and I'll show you the launch for, uh, we'll, we're gonna figure out what launcher is necessary for low Earth orbit option. Of course, Starship can work. I mean, that's that's a given. The question is, what other things could possibly work without it looking awkward with its wings extended in particular? If we have the wings folded, it's a little bit easier, but it's still pretty bulky. So anyway, and you know, there's the normal question marks, the Vulcan option, the New Glenn option, and such. So we'll see. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.